What is up guys, my name is Brandon and this is DIY Vlogger. In this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to make any video look cinematic using PowerDirector 15 and up. You can also use older versions of PowerDirector but the newer versions are going to be a little bit better and have more features and I will link those in the description below so if you are interested in buying PowerDirector 15 or 16 you can hit those links in the description and buy it straight from there. Um, you can also translate this tutorial into other video editors. Most video editors will have the capacity to do these things. Um, they're very simple things to do, um, but without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so first I'm going to talk about how to make the cinematic clips using your camera, and then I'll go into the post side of things and how to edit it to make it look better. Um, so when you're editing a video, you want to focus on three things. You want to focus on movement, you want to focus on your focusing in the video itself, and you also want to focus on speed. A lot of things with your camera you're going to want to do slow and smooth. Those are big things when you're making cinematic clips. You also want to have lots of movement in your clips, but not to the point where it's crazy, tons of movement and you're, you can't see what's going on. You want slow movement, steady movement, and you want just a little bit in each clip. And the last thing is speed. We're going to mostly adjust that in post, but you can do some, but when you're actually recording, you can do slow movements or you can do fast movements like you saw in the beginning montage. So now I'm going to show you guys the difference between a clip before I edited it and after. Um, so I'm just going to do this clip right here um, I'm not going to play it for you right now, I'll have it overlaid on the screen so you guys can look at that. So here's the before and the after. So as you can see, there's a big difference between the two clips. They're the same clip, but they're much different. The first clip is a little overexposed, it's too bright, and in the second clip I toned down the brightness and exposure levels, made it a little darker, which is definitely a thing you're going to see throughout my clips and other people's clips. Most cinematic clips you're going to see are dark, so that's definitely a thing you're going to see in my video and in other people's videos as well. The other thing I changed is the speed. I slowed down the video when I was still and I sped it up when I was moving. Um, you can change that around. You can speed it up when you're, when you're still and slow it down for movement. It just depends on what kind of movement. In this clip, I was moving to another point, so I sped it up while I was moving to that point. In other clips, you're going to want to speed it up when you're still and slow it down when you're moving. But in my clip, in this particular clip, I just sped it up when I was moving. So now I'm going to get into the details of the actual editing of the clips. So I'm just going to take this first clip. Um, I might edit a few others, but for now I'm just going to start with this clip. And you'll get the idea. Most videos are going to be very similar to this one. Um, and it's going to change depending on the video and stuff like that. Um, but I'm just going to show you a few examples so you can get an idea of what to do. Um, so first what we're going to do is I'm going to actually duplicate this clip so I have a reference copy and paste so now the second clip I'm going to um, edit and the first one I'm going to leave by itself so in so in PowerDirector 15 to edit the color and other attributes of a clip you're going to go into fix enhance and if you want a more detailed description of these and if you want a more detailed description of how to use this software I'll link that tutorial in the description below I've got three videos out on that uh, showing you how to use this software so definitely go check that out so definitely go check that out if you're interested in that um, but anyways next we're going to go to color adjustment this is where you're going to adjust your exposure brightness contrast saturation vibrancy stuff like that um, you can also do lighting adjustment. I did use that on a few clips, 
this just makes the clip either brighter or darker and you can also turn on extreme backlight but most of the time you're not really going to use that um, so in this video I'm just going to be using the regular color adjustment my normal settings that I usually put in for every video before uh, I tweak it a little bit is I put the exposure about halfway between where it starts and where the end is and then I tone down the brightness a little bit and then after that I'll bring up the contrast usually almost all the way um, something like this almost all the way you can do all the way if you want I'm just gonna keep it barely on the line um, I might bring up the exposure a little bit more and with saturation I usually bring that a little bit down so it's not too oversaturated and then I bring the vibrancy up so the colors really pop um, that definitely helps the video look a lot better um, and then highlight healing you can do that um, you don't really need to it doesn't change a whole lot um, so I'm just going to so I'm just going to leave that you can also do sharpness but I wouldn't recommend over sharpening it um, if you do sharpen it I would just recommend a tiny bit um, because if you do more than just a, a little bit it's going to look pretty bad um, so I think that looks pretty good so far um, as you can see the colors are really popping um, it might be a little over vibrant might bring that down a little bit so as you can see it's already looking a lot better and now I'm going to go in to the tools power tools and edit the speed of the video and of course it's going to and of course the speed that you're going to adjust is going to be different in every video but in this video as you saw before I'm going to slow it down while the camera is still and speed it up while I'm moving um, so it's pretty simple to do that you just go to selected range wait for the video to load a little bit and then you're going to hit this create time shift button this is going to create a section and inside that section the speed that you set is going to apply to that section it's not going to apply to the whole video it's just going to apply to the section that you set it to set to if that makes sense <laughs> so I'm going to extend this to where I start moving a little bit before then looks like that is pretty good and I'm also going to ease in and ease out um, sometimes it's better not to do these but basically what this does is it slowly slows down the video or slowly speeds up the video so it's more smooth looking instead of just straight off the bat it's going to slow motion and then right into the next clip it's going to fast or whatever um, it just makes it look a little better but it is going to depend on the clip and then this is where you edit the speed you can also edit the speed by changing the duration um, normally I just use the speed multiplier but if you want a specific length for the video you're going to change the duration um, I'm going to put it about 670 and since this was shot in 30 frames per second you're not going to have great slow motion. Um, I would recommend doing videos in 60 frames per second to get that better slow motion. Um, and you can slow it down more than if you're doing it at 30 frames per second. So now we can watch the video. And you can see it's a little bit slower and it's very laggy. So I'm really sorry about that, guys. Um, let me actually see if I can fix that. All right, now it should be a little bit better. So as you can see, it's a little slower than normal. Um, it's a little stuttery, as you can see, but again, if you can shoot in 60 frames per second, I would recommend that for slow motion. Um, and then once it starts moving, I'm going to speed it up. So I'm going to start here, create a time shift, and move that to where I get to the board here. Probably do it to there. And I'm going to speed this up probably like four times, 4.8 times. And if you want to ease this in, you are going to need to go to a shorter time to where it's possible 
and then maximize the speed it can go. Um, I'm just going to go to about 4.5 times and not use the ease in, ease out, um, just because um, when you're speeding up videos and you use the ease in, ease out, it's going to be pretty slow and it's only going to get to that speed once it gets to the middle of the video and then it's going to start slowing down because of the ease out feature. So normally when I speed up the videos, I keep the ease in, ease out settings turned off um, just so you can have the whole video to see the speed difference. So now if we play it, you can see that it will be pretty slow and then it's going to speed up until you get to the board here. And then finally, I'm going to do the rest of the clip in slow motion. And I'm going to again do 0 0.670 times speed. 0.67. Come on. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to click OK. And now you can see the video is pretty much exactly the same length as the original. Um, this isn't always going to be the case, but yeah, that's basically how you edit the videos guys. The settings are going to vary depending on the clip. You're going to want to fiddle around with it until you get a good looking video. Um, and now I'm going to show you guys how to, um, and now I'm going to show you guys how to sync your clips to a soundtrack. All right, so now I'm going to import my soundtrack from Flicked. I believe that's what it's called. I'll put the I'll put the link in the description and I'll put the name on the screen um, in case I got it wrong. Um, so I believe it's found in Downloads and it's a .mp3. So my clip that I picked out is called Bob Sunrain .mp3. You can search that on the website linked in the description if you want to check out that video. Um, so I'm going to now get all my clips and put them together. And once you put all your clips together, you can just put your music underneath that. And I would also recommend muting your clips so you don't get all that background music in your clips. All right. so. Getting your clips to sync with your music is pretty easy. It's really just a matter of cutting your clips to the length that you want. Um, so let me bring the music up so you can see it. I'm just going to put it over top of the background music of the background sounds of my videos. Um, so as you can see, I do personally like cutting up my, my audio so I can see where I want to end the video clips. Because in your audio, you're going to see on the waveforms here, I'll show you an example of this. So say we go to about here. You can see on the screen here, the waveforms of the music. So you can see where it gets louder and where it gets softer. So what you want to do is you want to end your clips and start your clips right before the sound starts getting louder. So in this case, if I play the video, you'll hear that it fluctuates between loud and soft. So right before it gets to that loud point, that's where you want to end your video and start a new one. Because then as soon as the person hears that sound, it's going to immediately skip to the next video. Um, so that's going to give the a sense of fluency between the video and the audio and it's going to sound a lot better than if you just put your clips on top of your audio and finish the video and there's a lot of other things you can do like in my original tutorial I showed you how to make a um, I believe it was 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio something like that um, but I really don't recommend doing that because um, the resolution natively for the videos that you're going to be making is going to be 16 by 9. So if you have a 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio screen, you're just going to see big borders because the black line was just put there over top of your 16.9 video. 
it's not natively 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio. So I would just recommend having your clips um, at 16 by 9. You can do the black bars if you want, but it's not going to look very good on certain screens. Um, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, so that's basically it. Um, and the other thing I will say is you want to get an audio clip that matches the feel of your video clips. You don't want to put a bunch of random video clips that have absolutely nothing in common together with an audio clip that sounds nothing like the feel of your videos. Um, so I know that's kind of confusing to, to think about at first, but say you're outside like I was in the rain and you got this nice soft sounding great feeling song and that's not the feel you want to portray when it's raining outside when it's raining outside you want a soundtrack that sounds kind of like rain and you want it to feel not super bright like it's a sunny day you want it to feel kind of darker but not like a dark video sound so basically what i'm trying to say is you want your audio to match the feel of your video so like if i'm inside so like if i have a pc build and I'm showing off my PC build with some cinematic clips, I'm going to want something that matches the feel, so like an upbeat, up-tempo clip that sounds cool, like maybe a hip-hop background music, um, you know, something like that to match the feel or the aesthetic that I'm going for. Um, hopefully you understand um, what I'm trying to say there, it's kind of confusing I know. And that's what makes it so hard to find good audio clips for your videos. I've been there, I've had a hard time to find audio clips, and if you look back at some of my previous videos, I've just put a random audio clip that doesn't exactly sound or sync to my video. Um, and that's one of the main things that people get wrong when they're making cinematic videos, is they don't sync their videos to the music and they don't get the right feel music for their video. Um, so that's a big thing when it comes to cinematic videos. Um, so definitely make sure you're getting that right. Um, but anyways, that's it guys. It's really simple to do this. Um, you might have thought it would be a lot harder and more complex, but it's really not. Um, so I hope you did learn something. If you did, hit that like button to show me some support. It really keeps me going. And also, if you enjoy these kinds of videos, hit that subscribe button so you get notified of when more like this come out. I am going to be posting more Cyberlink PowerDirector tutorials soon. So hit that subscribe button so you get notified of when those videos come out. Also check out my Instagram page. I'm going to be posting lots of uh, behind the scenes and clips of my future videos on there this summer. Um, I also might post some uh, tech news and things like that on there as well. So follow me on my Instagram page at DIYVloggerYT. Um, the link is going to be in the description below as well. But anyways, that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching. Peace out.